Venture capital is a $250 billion industry that takes your money, whether you know it or not, and puts it into promising startups like FTX, Theranos, and WeWork. But what the f do these people actually do all day, and how are they different from private equity or hedge funds? An estimated fair value of $16.33 a share. You invested roughly $20 million in Alibaba, and at the time it went public, it was worth roughly $90 billion. So you um, started this firm in what year? Uh, 2009. And how much money do you manage now? About $18 billion today. I, I had and sold my startup to uh, Twitter, and that was sort of my first liquid money in Silicon Valley. And, um, you know, you get your uh, wealth manager, and they start talking to you about, well, this is what we should do. And um, You have the distinguished responsibility and honor of being on the boards of both of these companies. I want to get your reaction to uh, where the market cap landed today, Airbnb's price uh, more than doubling. Venture capital is a type of private equity, and private equity is any investment made into a non-public company. A private equity fund raises money from investors to buy companies or other assets that are not listed on public exchanges, and then uses them to generate returns. And so we'll, uh, we'll be interested to see how this affects uh, private equity over time. So if you're, if you're watching this later, you know, do, uh, do Google it and see what happens. Private companies are much less transparent than public companies, which are forced by the SEC and the exchanges to publish financials every quarter, in addition to other information that they must keep current. Private companies are also harder to buy or sell, since you can't just open your Robinhood app and buy some shares. The difficulty and illiquidity of dealing with private companies means that investors expect higher returns, and the managers running the funds can charge higher fees to compensate them for the extra work. The capital can be used to fund new technology, make acquisitions, expand working capital, and to bolster and solidify a balance sheet. So there's many uses of the capital uh, that uh, is put into these companies through private equity investment. They achieve those higher returns through a number of different strategies. One strategy is a buyout fund that will take investor money, take out a large loan on top of that money, and use it to buy a large established company that can be made more efficient by laying off staff and improving processes. Another private equity strategy is a rescue fund that buys out a failing business for cheap and tries to turn it around, usually by laying off staff and improving processes. But if you don't have the stomach for firing people all day, then venture capital is the type of private equity for you. Most of the private equity industry works with established private companies, but venture capital invests into businesses that are just getting started. Some private equity investments will be made into businesses that are nothing more than some idea drawn out on a napkin. But what does that actually involve doing? You wake up one day and find out you have become the general partner of a venture capital fund. Congratulations. The top venture capitalists are all billionaires, so if you play the game right, you can be rich beyond your wildest dreams. And all you need to do is follow these five simple steps. Step one is raising money. Venture capitalists normally risk their own money in addition to money they raise from investors. You can't get money off just anyone, because venture capital is highly risky, so financial authorities say that you must be an accredited investor, which is someone who has one of the three following characteristics. An income of at least $200,000 if they are single, or $300,000 if combined with the spouse's income. They can also qualify if they have a net worth of over $1 million, excluding their primary residence, individually or with their spouse. Alternatively, they can qualify to make these investments if they are a knowledgeable employee, or if they have a valid Series 7, 65, or 82 license, which qualifies them as a financial professional. The SEC makes these rules to protect average investors from being preyed upon to make risky investments that they don't understand and won't be able to financially recover from. As a venture capitalist, you can basically just ignore these requirements anyway, because you are going to be targeting investors that can write a $10 million check over dinner and think nothing of it. If you need to raise money from average people, you can go through a pension fund and they can make investments on their behalf, because according to the SEC, venture capital is less risky if there's a middleman. Why? Don't ask too many questions, that's why. Once you have convinced enough big investors to give you money, you can move on to step two, and as Anakin Skywalker said, that is where the fun begins. The fun begins. So it's time to learn how money works to find out how venture capitalists make and lose billions of dollars by pretending they know what they are doing. This week's lesson was sponsored by HubSpot. In this video, I'm talking about how businesses begin and how they get the necessary money needed to go to market. Before that, companies need a successful business plan. Fortunately, HubSpot is here to fill in for me. 
they've created a great resource for creating a successful business plan. Their business plan template helps you create an effective pitch by writing a compelling business story, planning out your business model, understanding your market, and creating a path to profitability. As someone who has created a little business for themselves, I did not write out a solid plan from the beginning, and now I'm stuck playing catch up. HubSpot's free resource is exactly what I would have needed, and what I wish I had when I created this company. If you're an entrepreneur or just planning out your next side project, take advantage of this free resource. Use my link in the description and start diving deeper into creating your own business. Step two for your venture capital firm is to find a venture worth investing in. The money you give a promising business is what they are going to use to make that idea a reality. So before you get involved, that business may not exist at all. Most businesses fail, even when they are backed by venture capital. So the responsible strategy is to make lots of little bets and hope that one in every hundred generates 1,000 X returns to offset the losses from the 99 failures and still deliver a nice profit. Because the businesses you'll be targeting at this stage have no formal operations, the due diligence is very straightforward. Good venture capital firms will have standardized share purchase agreements that they can share with the new founders so they can focus on building their product. The hardest part about this step is finding promising entrepreneurs to invest in. If your venture capital firm opens up to receiving pitches from anybody, then your investments team will waste all of their time listening to bad product ideas from hopeful founders that don't understand how to run a business. If your firm makes their search too narrow, you could miss out on billion dollar opportunities because founders get funded by competing VC firms that make it easier to raise cash. Some VC firms build relationships with colleges and business incubators like Y Combinator and Techstars to find entrepreneurs worth their attention. During the height of the startup gold rush in 2021, venture capitalists were spending a lot of their time and money on marketing themselves as industry thought leaders to attract the attention of new founders they could invest in. When interest rates were low and investors were throwing money at anything, the hard part became finding enough promising businesses to give money to. As a venture capitalist, you get paid based off how much money you manage and how well your fund performs. So you want to be managing as much money as you possibly can. The performance part actually is not that important, but I'll get to that later. A VC firm can start raising more money while it's already putting out early fund investors money to work. This creates the incentive for fund managers like you to give money to any business that you can justify to your existing investors. And because early stage investing is risky, if the company fails, it would be hard to blame you. One of the most underappreciated scenes from the first season of Secession shows one of the billionaire media heirs try their hand at becoming a venture capitalist. Without spoiling too much, they attempt to make an investment into the Amazon for local art collectives. The billionaire tries very hard to impress the startup founders, going so far as to buy sneakers to impress them during a pitch meeting. But despite their best efforts, the startup turns down their money. The showrunners clearly knew what they were talking about, because venture capital for the last 10 years has not been like Shark Tank where entrepreneurs try to impress investors enough to back their business. It's the other way around. Startup investors had to fight hard to give money to promising ideas. Due diligence is an important part of any investment. Venture capitalists putting money towards businesses that are just in the idea stage can't do it because there is nothing to audit. But recently, some venture capitalists stopped doing it even with later stage companies that did have financials and operations to look at. Due diligence would slow down the investment process and the venture capitalists risk losing deals to other firms that would make it easier and faster for founders to raise money. As a good venture capitalist, you have to realize that sometimes it will be hard to raise money, but easy to find businesses that need funding. And sometimes it will be easy to raise money, but hard to find opportunities that haven't already been funded by your competitors. Aaron Griffith, a tech startup and venture capital reporter for the New York Times, wrote the article, The End of Faking It in Silicon Valley, which says that after a long run of easy money and wild valuations, the pendulum is starting to swing the other way. As a savvy venture capitalist, you are going to need to pay special attention to this in step three, scaling the business. The way you and your investors are going to make money is by growing the business from good ideas to big companies with lots of customers. A venture capitalist is normally not a silent partner. As part of their investment negotiations, you should have secured yourself a few seats on the board and set up a line of communication to help the founders grow the business. The money you have given them will be spent on product development and most importantly, acquiring customers. If the business acquires more customers and develops a working product, it will demand a higher valuation, even if the business is not turning a profit. Customer growth and product development are the two things that a business needs to keep raising money, even if it isn't turning a profit. When venture capitalists are doing everything they can to give money to new ideas and eschewing due diligence that could slow down their deal making, it creates opportunities to embellish the numbers and overpromise on product features. 
Some venture capitalists actually supported this kind of behavior because it was kind of difficult to tell the difference between a founder that was actually really optimistic about their company and a liar trying to defraud investors. To early stage venture capitalists, it didn't matter. Because by time anybody realized in the crazy hot startup market, they would have dumped their position onto the next round of investors paying a premium based off the promises of a founder and no due diligence of their own. Warren Buffett famously said that if the tide goes out, you find who's been swimming naked. And that's exactly what's happening in the VC industry right now. A snapback? Somebody said to me literally earlier today, man, the private markets are a mess. The value of risky venture capital investments is down, and startups that once had fund managers fighting to give them money can no longer complete the fundraise they need to stay afloat. If an honest business fails, nobody can complain. Only accredited investors are allowed to play in the venture capital space because they should know the risk. But the culture of fake it until you make it that has been funded by venture capitalists like you that are only going after the next big exit has seen a long list of founders sent to prison for fraud. Charlie Javis, the founder of Frank, which was supposed to be the Amazon of higher education, is now facing 100 years in prison for defrauding investors when it was discovered that she was over-reporting the number of users on her platform by making fake accounts. A jury found Rishi Shah, a co-founder of the advertising software startup Alcom Health, guilty of defrauding customers and investors. Trevor Milton and Nikola Motors have been convicted of fraud and can face up to 25 years in prison. Sam Bankman-Fried was arrested after his crypto exchange collapse and could go to prison for more than 100 years. And who could forget Elizabeth Holmes, the founder and CEO of Theranos, who is now spending 11 years in prison for defrauding investors and falsifying medical results. All of these fraudsters were once the heroes of the venture capital firms that backed them. A good venture capitalist talks a lot about the successful companies that they have backed, because it helps them to both find investors to give them more money in step one and make startups more open to investment, hoping that the success can be repeated. As a venture capitalist, you are going to have to be comfortable with a certain amount of self-promotion, but if you get into the habit of dumping frothy positions onto late-stage investors or the general public through a SPAC or an IPO, just make sure that you clear out your old tweets and investor newsletters quickly or things could get embarrassing. And that's step four, the big exit. Once a company gets big enough, it's time to cash in by selling it to institutions that want to hold the company long-term or by releasing it onto the public markets. At this point, the rules get a lot more strict and you will probably need help from an investment banker who specializes in company exits. As a venture capitalist, that's a good chance where you started your career. But if you aren't sure what these guys do in their 80 hour weeks, then go and watch this video to find out what the fuck investment bankers actually do. A special thanks again to HubSpot for making it possible for everybody to keep on learning how money works.